Hey guys, today's video is going to demonstrate how to create a virtual machine inside a desktop computer. Now a couple of pieces of terminology you'll need to know. First off, we're going to be using VMware Workstation Pro for the software that's going to operate the virtual machine. Second, you'll need to know that the computer you are creating the virtual machine on, your desktop computer, is known as the host computer. Lastly, the virtual machine that you're creating is going to be known as your guest computer. So in summary, you're going to use VMware Workstation on your host computer to create a guest operating system running inside it. So before we begin, you should know that the VMware Workstation software is already pre-installed in our labs here at Georgia Southern. However, if you would like to install VMware Workstation on your own computer, you can go to the Georgia Southern University uh, VMware Web Store and you can download VMware Workstation Pro for your personal computer or VMware Fusion for your Mac. Now, in order to create a virtual machine, we're going to need a couple of things besides the software. One thing we're going to need is an ISO file. An ISO file is a disk image of the installation media that we're going to need to create the computer. So whenever you get a brand new computer, it comes with the operating system already on it. However, we're creating a virtual machine that does not have an operating system and that operating system needs to come from somewhere. So what we're going to do is we are going to download a copy of the Windows 10 installation media from the Microsoft website. And I'll leave a link below in the description. Here, we want to create a Windows 10 installation media. In other words, that ISO file I mentioned. So we're going to use the Microsoft download tool to actually download the ISO file. When you click this link, it prompts you to run, save, or cancel. We're going to run this executable. It's going to ask you, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? What this means is we need administrator rights on this computer to run this program. So that means you'll have to do it in room 2208 or 2210 of the IT building or on a computer that you own that you have administrator rights to. So we're going to click yes and it's going to launch the tool and after a bit of setup, it's going to ask us to accept the terms. And then it wants to know if we want to upgrade the PC we're working on, which we do not, or if we want to create installation media, which we do. So we select the second option, click Next. We ensure that this is set to the correct language, the Windows 10 edition and 64-bit, which is pretty much any modern computer today and we click Next. Lastly, we want to save the ISO file eventually to a thumb drive so that we'll have access to it, but we don't want to overwrite our thumb drive, which is what the first option would do. So what we do is we select the ISO file option, the second option, and we click Next to download that file. It prompts where we'd like to save it. We can go ahead and save it into our downloads folder and this is going to take a few minutes to run. After it completes the download it's going to run through a verification process to make sure there were no errors and once verification is complete we just click finish. Now that we've downloaded the ISO file, we can go back to VMware Workstation and begin the process of creating a new virtual machine. We do that by clicking the Create a New Virtual Machine option. The first thing it asks you is what type of configuration you want. If you'd like very detailed control over every aspect of your virtual machine's hardware, then we click Custom, or if we just want a simple workstation, we go ahead and click the Typical option, which is what we're going to do. Next, it asks us where we would like to install the operating system from. If we had a physical DVD from Microsoft, we could select the first option. 
However, we've downloaded an ISO file, so we select the second option and we browse to that ISO file. Here I have it in my downloads folder. I select windows.iso and I click open. Normally it will detect which operating system you have. If it doesn't, it will give you this little warning and you can check it on the next page. We'll click next. We'll verify that it does have Microsoft Windows, Windows 10 X64 version selected. We click next. We give our virtual machine a name. For example, this could be Windows 10 X64 for IT1130. It also asks where we'd like to put the virtual machine. Since a virtual machine is only a collection of files on your host computer, you get to specify exactly what folder to store those in. In this case, it will store it in my Documents folder under Virtual Machines. Next. I specify the disk space we would like for the virtual machine. This is the point at which we're interested in what the minimum requirements are for Windows. If you visit the Microsoft site looking for the Windows 10 specifications and system requirements, uh, I'll leave a link to this page below, you'll find the minimum system requirements required to run the Windows 10 operating system. If we scroll down, you'll see that it requires at least a one gigahertz processor, at least two gigabytes of memory for a 64-bit operating system, and at least 32 gigabytes of hard disk space. Now, since we're running Windows 10 as a guest operating system on a Windows 10 computer running a host operating system, it can be implied that we'll need at least four gigabytes total, two gigabytes for the guest and two gigabytes for the host. We'll also need 32 gigabytes of disk space for each operating system for a total of 64 gigabytes minimum. So now that we know the minimum size we need to run Windows 10, we'll go back to VMware. We'll note that we need a minimum disk space of 32 gigabytes and it defaults to 60 which is fine and then it asks us do we want one 60 gigabyte file or would we like to have it split across multiple files which might make it easier to move from one computer to another later. We'll go ahead and set it as a single file since we don't plan to move this computer and click next and here it shows you the summary of everything that it's giving you. It's giving you 60 gigabytes of hard disk space, two gigabytes of memory, two CPU cores, and a network connection. If we wanted to, we could click the Customize Hardware button and make changes to this setup. As it is, we'll go ahead and click Finish. It will create the virtual machine, and we'd like to then power on the virtual machine. Now one thing to note when you go to power it on is you must tell it to boot from your ISO file otherwise it won't find the operating system. So that means once we power it on we're going to click inside the window that is the display into our virtual machine and we're going to get ready to hit uh, the spacebar to let it know that we want to boot from the ISO file. So I click power on, I click into my window and it says press any key to boot from the CD or DVD. So I go ahead and click that. And it looks like I was too late. So since I missed it, I'm going to go ahead and click on the toolbar, this option to power off the virtual machine. It warns you that powering it off, you could lose uh, information. So we go ahead and power it off. We turn it back on again. I click in here and I hit a key. And this time I got in there quick enough to actually boot from the ISO file. Now we're going to go into the Windows 10 installation process. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go through these options very quickly since we're gonna take the defaults on most of them. And I'll probably speed up the video at this point. Here, 
If you don't have a product key, you can go ahead and just click on, I don't have a product key and move on to the next step in the installation. Here you get to choose which version of the operating system you'd like to install. If you do choose to enter a product key, that product key will be tied to this guest computer and will not be usable on other computers. It will be detected as a, a pirated copy. So we can run the Windows 10 operating system briefly as a trial without, an, without a product key. So we're gonna go ahead and just pick one of these options and I'll go ahead and pick the Workstation 10 Pro and click Next. Here, we're going to go ahead and install Windows. We'll specify which drive we're going to use, which is our uh, 60 gigabyte drive we created. We click the New button. We apply all of this space to our new drive. Click OK. And then click Next. At this point, our computer is restarting and it should be booting into the actual operating system. Now that the new operating system in our guest computer has started, it's going to ask us for some basic information. Now, interestingly enough, Microsoft is pushing their customers to create a Microsoft account in order to log into their own computer. If you don't want to create a Microsoft account, then we can bypass this simply by turning off the networking. We can do that by right-clicking on the tab, selecting Settings, going to the network adapter and turning it off at the top under device status. So make it not connected and click OK. Now, when we set it up for personal use and click Next, we get a network error and we can skip it for now. Here, we would go ahead and choose a username and password for our PC. And finally, we get to decide what type of privacy settings we'd like to set up. Congratulations, you have successfully set up your first virtual machine. Now, before we complete this tutorial, however, you should note that there's a couple of things to know about interacting with a virtual machine. The first is you may have some tools that need to be installed that will help your host computer interact properly with your guest operating system. We can install those by clicking the install tools option and then going to our D drive and running <clears throat> and running the setup 64. The other thing that's good to know is that if you would ever like to get your mouse back from your guest operating system, you can tap the control and alt keys on your keyboard at the same time. Doing so will release your mouse from the guest operating system. So I'll go ahead and restart my guest computer to let the changes take effect. Now that we're logged in, we can use the virtual computer just like any other PC. The only difference is it's running virtually on our host computer. 
don't forget, if you'd like to act, be able to access the network, we need to go back to the settings by right-clicking on the tab, going to the network adapter options, and turning it back on in order to connect to networks. So the last thing you really need to know is how to shut down your computer. The proper way to do this is to go to your start menu and select the shutdown option. At any point in time, you can always use your toolbar here in VMware Workstation to power off or restart or shut down your guest operating system.